And so all of those things are evident when people hear you on a podcast. It's they're evident when you're on when you're speaking. They're evident when you're uh, an author. They're evident when you get in an award. They're evident, you know, on and on. It's about showcasing your expertise, not to become a celebrity of an actor, but the celebrity of visibility, showcasing showcasing your expertise and making it visible, credible, and marketable. This is essential no matter what industry you're in. Welcome to the Business Ownership Podcast, brought to you by Awareness Strategies, helping you navigate the waters between entrepreneurship and ownership. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedeluk, and I'm super glad that you're here with us today because I'm here with my most amazing guest, Ruth. Ruth, thank you so much for being here with us today. Of course. (laughs) Awesome. So give everybody the highlight of who you are and what you do for business. All right. So uh, my name is Ruth Klein, excuse me, and I've written seven books, seven best-selling books. And uh, basically, I help people identify their genius zone, actually. Um, And once you identify your genius zone, you really are on track to know your brand. And from there, um, I help people pull out really the essence of of what they want to say, the essence of their messaging. And that can be signature speech, that can be a TEDx talk, that can be a book, Um, And so the important thing that I do is that, um, you know, with my background in psychology, I've always been so intrigued with people and their stories and and their pivotal moments that got them to where they are today. (laughs) I was going to ask you how you got into all of that, but uh, psychology would be a, a, a stand for that in that. Um, you're you're getting to understand somebody. How is it that you can find and pinpoint kind of that messaging? Um, does it just stand out to you and you go, yeah, it's clear as a bell to me, or is there some other kind of magic going on? <laughs> you know, you know, it's interesting. You see, it's interesting you ask because um, for the longest time, people would say, Ruth, you're so intuitive, you're so wise. And I I remember the first time I heard the, it's like, it's like, oh, oh. come on. You know what? You don't, don't, don't give me that. Don't give me that. Um, and um, and then I remember one time where I was walking with my middle child, and he, he was probably in college at the time, and he came to visit. And I remember this so clearly. We were um, in Santa Monica, Third Street Promenade, and he asked me a question. I didn't even know what it was, and I answered him. And he goes, "Mom," and he's the linear guy, right? And he goes, "Mom, how did you get there?" And I looked at him like, I really didn't know. I didn't know how I got to that. And it bothered me for years, for years that bothered me because he got so upset with me because he said, mom, you can't just tell me something like that and not tell me how you did that, how you got there. (laughs) What are the derivatives? I got to know. Yeah, exactly. And then I realized, (laughs) oh my gosh, I have to figure this out. I have to go tush backwards because this is not only with with this question that that David asked me but also what what is it that I really do how do I get the results I get with my clients Michelle up and though that I didn't know I didn't really know I just knew I got results and so I went tush backwards and and then I was able to put modules together because up until then there were no modules it was just work with me these are the results done um, and so as, over the years, I realized that I, you know, we all have gifts. We've all been given gifts, all of us. And it's a matter of, are we using them? And I think because that's so important to me, that's so monumental. That is why I do what I do. That is why I help people find their genius zone. Because in that place, in that genius place that we all have, we all have it. Um, and I will, I will argue with anyone that says that I don't have a genius zone. I will argue happily, but nicely, uh, because that is the zone. That's the literally the zone, you know, when you're writing or when you're working on something and, and you feel like you're in the zone, that's what happens when you live and particularly work in the genius zone. I love it. So what do you think it is that, 
stops somebody from realizing what their zone is because you would think that you know when you're in it you know you're in it, <laughs> it would be obvious to us but somehow it's not so obvious to us yeah you know and this is where this is where my psychology uh clinical and spiritual psychology have come in so handy so wonderful and that is we all you know between the ages of two and eight we basically have decided who we are and we've decided we we have these beliefs about ourselves and then we we live with those beliefs and we find results that feed those beliefs between two and eight because that time it's like a recorder and it's completely open and we hear all these things and we don't know that someone who tells us that we're dumb, that that's how they feel. We don't know at those ages when someone comes crashing down on us and humiliates us. We don't know that that's about them. We think it's about us. And so, you know, we don't we don't realize and the 40s, believe it or not, that age between eh, 39 to 47, 46 those are those are prime years where the fan gets hit if you haven't um, looked at your behaviors because here's the deal. People think they're wrong or there's something wrong with them. No, that's not it at all. If something's not working, that's all you need to know. It's not working. So go figure out why it's not working doesn't make you a bad person, doesn't make you a mean person. Um, it's all behavior. It's not you. It's not your, it's not your soul. It's not your spirit. And so as a result, people will think that, you know, um, th th there's, there's so many limiting beliefs. They're limited beliefs. I can't do it. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not tall enough. All the enoughs. Um, I'm really a fraud, you know, I can almost relate to that one. Um, I had a high level of test anxiety when I was growing up high, but I didn't know it at the time. And so when I was getting in, getting the SAT test, remember the SAT test we had to take for college? <laughs> and I wanted to go to a really good college. And I thought, oh my goodness. So I took the SAT test and I completely killed one section. And that one section comes back to this intuitive piece. That one section, Michelle, was comparatives. And so it was like, you know, what is this? What is this pen to this phone as this pair of glasses is to this piece of paper with writing on it? There, I couldn't see just one. I could have put anything together. And so I completely um, Ace that eliminated <laughs> Yeah. And so my SAT scores were really, really low. So now I'm thinking, hmm, I'm not really smart yet. People keep calling me smart, but I'm really not. And even in oh, grammar yeah. school, yes, we took, you know, achievement tests, remember? And I knew it was an achievement test. And so I didn't do well on achievement tests. And, but for years and years and years, I thought people thought I was much smarter because, but they didn't really know. They didn't really know that I didn't do well on the SAT, so I couldn't be all that smart. And years later, you know, I found out there's many different types of intelligence, and that was, you know, test anxiety, because I would get A's, you know, I got straight A's. I I graduated very, very, very high in college, but even then it was like, huh, you know, I don't know. They don't really know this, and it wasn't until years and years later. So we have these limiting beliefs. And these limiting beliefs, um, they've got to be checked out. They've got to be checked out. And if they're not, we continue having them and we continue making life and work more difficult than it needs to be. Nice. Uh, and you just made me think, wow, if I had to embrace all of the negative thoughts I've ever had and, and turn it into a brand just for fun, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start that I'm not good enough brand and you know, this, yeah. the world sucks. I hate it. 
this isn't going absolutely. anywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I was talking to a client speaking of that to that point. I was talking to a client yesterday and she was saying, you know, it's just so hard to make these hard. hard. You know, that word hard. hard. And and you got to so really the, overemphasize that A. It's that's really right. Hard. Exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, when the mind hears hard, all of a sudden it's heavy energy. But here's the deal, as I told her, the accurate word there, it's not about hard. You know, you, we've got to start using accurate words. Mm -hmm. And the accurate word there is awareness. It's not about being hard. It's about being aware. And all of a sudden, if you can use that term, that energy, just that dark energy, heavy energy just lifts. And the truth is, it's awareness. It's not hard. It's awareness. And so, you know, our words matter, our words matter, and our words carry energy, and our words come from our thoughts, and our thoughts come from our beliefs. And so if we're finding, um, you know, this is so great, awareness strategies, yes. Um, if we're finding that, um, if we're finding that we're feeling heavy first thing in the morning or any time during the day, we need to stop and journal. We need to stop and journal. You know, I often say, get it up and out, up and out, because if it sits there, it's going to linger. You're going to get a headache. You're going to get lower back pains. You're going to get a neck pain. You're going to get all other kinds of things because the body never lies. The body follows our thoughts, period, period. And so, um, and the body lets us know before it has the fit, it lets us know when something is not working, but we don't listen usually, you know, uh, just to give you an aside of this, uh, when someone has, um, oh, you know, when they, when they eat something and then they don't feel well, and then they take over the counter something to make them feel better. That's not the solution, people. <laughs> That's not the solution. I'm not so, eating the thing in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Or are you eating under stressful conditions? Right. Because that will also secrete a lot of cortisol, that chemical that, you know, I was talking to another client yesterday and she said, you know, Ruth, my stomach, um, if I, if I haven't eaten for a while, my stomach really starts to hurt. When I start to eat, it feels better. And then all of a sudden it just occurred to me you've got a lot of cortisol going on and what, and she's, you know, she has a stressful situation within the family. And so, um, you know, it, it, your body talks, you know, our body talks to us. We just need to listen. And, um, and usually when our body talks, it's really trying to, um, our, our thoughts are trying to talk. Our spirits trying to say something, our energy is trying to say something, but we, you know, we just, plow through it just plow through it no that's that's not the solution that's not the solution so um and i have lots of solutions for it so don't get me wrong but i'm just saying that we all experience it we all experience these kinds of things at one time or another um Absolutely. and the more yeah no i was going to say a lot of times people will say to me, well, I don't want to emphasize it. I don't want to bring it up because I don't want to emphasize it. And I, I'll tell you something, like get a book that you, is just your negativity journal. It's just the, when stuff's going wrong, you get to go in there. And then once you've resolved it, kind of seen the other side and, and resolved it, then you get to take that paper and burn it. And so your <laughs> negative binder can always be blank, Yeah, but you want somewhere that you can go and and get that out and bring it to the surface. Because if you don't, if you're not bringing that awareness to it you don't know what the root cause is what the problem is and it's that's, always going to hijack you that's so, exactly right that's exactly right and you know the medical the allopathic medical community only looks at symptoms mm -hmm. and i think one of the reasons that functional medicine has become more popular um and alternative remedies is because they tend to look at the source at the root, just in terms to your point, because that's what has to happen. That's what has to happen. Absolutely. And you were mm -hmm. mentioning the, the eating something and 
a lot of people don't realize that when they're stressed, their stomach acid is increasing. So of course you're going to get, you know, acid reflux and all of, all of these things. Are all so of that tied and, together. You know, the part, and, and cortisol. Yeah. And, and the hormones are going to go wacky. Uh, yeah, exactly. You when know, we think and- of a circumstance and we go, oh my God, that made me sick. Well, then you go, Mm, and <laughs> are you seeing yeah. the correlation there? <laughs> it's it's drag. Yeah. We so, we have this vocabulary that comes from that, but somehow we've lost the 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 intuitive hit that it comes from somewhere. Like yeah, I have, right. feel like and, I have the weight of the world on my shoulders, and you wonder why your back's hurting, and your neck is sore, and yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And you know, it's it's interesting. Um, it's very frenetic out there today. The world is very frenetic, and this little sucker has contributed this sucker has Ah. contributed yeah and so as much as I love my cell phone as much as I can see my emails when I'm out and about and check my messages and all of that and my texts it's wonderful and yet and yet um before we had cell phones the phone was always a problem, but now you carry the darn thing around. And I find, you know, and I, I'd like to think I'm aware, but I find when I have a moment that I'm not doing something, I pick this sucker up. And so I, I, (laughs) so I, I've been doing a 30 day detox and I start to go and it's like, nope, not going to do it. And what is that? It's an awareness. Doesn't mean it's good. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's just an awareness. I don't want to be controlled by this little sucker. Don't want to. You know, I'm not a brain surgeon. I don't need to check my emails every second and my texts. It's an addictive, you know, form that we've created in a very busy world to begin with. And so um, so the, the point is we need to start, we need to start becoming aware of what is working for us and what is not working for us and be able to connect and get help, a coach or um, a therapist or um, a, a priest or someone who we can start talking to, to reconnect with who we are number one, and number two, to identify the source. And the source almost always is thoughts and beliefs. Nice. I love it. And your premise when you're working with somebody is helping them to find their celebrity branding. Obviously, getting rid of all the limiting beliefs is going to contribute to that because, you know, you're not going to be your best you in camera or on book or on anything without kind of letting go of those limiting beliefs so we go see you we get those all taken care of and now we start to dig into kind of when we're in the flow what kind of things motivate us what else are we looking for to to help us find that celebrity status or what do you draw out of people to help you to find that so when i it's it's expert celebrity what is a celebrity a celebrity has influence a celebrity has leadership qualities a um a celebrity ha- usually has some kind of a mission uh that they believe in something a passion so it's taking your expertise and using that for the mission for the influence for and here's the other thing as an expert celebrity your visibility goes up because there's so much noise out there now, so much noise out there. And social media, as much as I love it, has contributed to the noise. And we don't know which end is up anymore. And so because of that, we need to become visible so that our clients, our potential clients can find us instead of us being down here with our clients they can't nobody can see one another so we need to elevate doesn't mean we're better doesn't mean we're a celebrity like an actor but what it means is we're visible we're a thought leader we're credible and we have marketability and so all of those things are evident when people hear you on a podcast it's they're evident when you're on when you're speaking they're evident when you're uh, an author they're evident when you get in an award they're evident you know on and on it's about showcasing your expertise not to become a celebrity of an actor 
but the celebrity of visibility, showcasing showcasing your expertise and making it visible, credible, and marketable. This is essential no matter what industry you're in, no matter if you work for a company, no no matter if you are an independent, an entrepreneur going from corporate to starting your own business, whether you're a doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief, it doesn't matter. It's all, it all has to be showcased. I love it. So when, how do I, people are coming to you, obviously you're working a lot with entrepreneurs. Is there anybody in particular that is kind of your favorite to work with or the people that find, tend to find, go after you the most? You know what I love? I love humans. I love, I, I just love, yeah, I just love humans. I love how they tick. I just find it fascinating. And I, you know, for me, for me, it's like a beautiful puzzle. And so I help people identify their puzzle pieces. And then I help them create this beautiful puzzle that nobody else has this picture, you know, and it's your brand, right? And even, you know, I call it, everybody has their own brand print, but people don't know what, what it is. They don't know what it is. And they, they, don't, they don't go deep enough to know what it is. And um, and even twins don't have the same fingerprints. Okay, so we're having some fun with the internet gods today, but we're going to keep going. <laughs> so, so give us an example of a Cinderella story of one of your clients. All right. I have so many of those. Um, so just as we were talking about twins don't have the same fingerprints, people don't have the same brand print. Yeah. Um, and it really matters what those puzzle pieces are. And when I was working with uh, two founders, they were unicorns because they were they had already um, had hundreds of millions of dollars in venture money. And I was just talking to one and he just and he's you know, he's, he's in his 20s and he loves everything to do with World War Two. And I go, you're kidding, Michael. He goes, no. And so we just started talking and I go, there is a huge market right there. Because people that there's there's a huge uh, population of people who love World War II everything, and so all of a sudden it opened up a huge marketing which they never thought. Why? Because that was such a special puzzle piece, and all the puzzle pieces are so important. I'll give you another Cinderella story where puzzle pieces are so important, and that's why I, what I love I get these puzzle pieces out of people. Uh, they'll, they'll often, I'll ask them questions and they often say, Michelle, wow, no one's ever asked me that. And I go, yes. <laughs> so um, another gal had written a book. She had a book coach and she published her book and nothing was happening with the book. So if you have a book and it's published and you're not getting clients, something is not something's not in alignment. Chances are the book does not represent you um, in a way that you want to be represented. So um, someone referred her to me and I read her book and I said, I am so sorry, but um, the only thing I would keep with this book is cover because right now, because I interviewed her for about 20 minutes because this book doesn't represent you. And she goes, no, 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 Ruth, you don't understand. I had a book coach. I wrote a book. I published it. I've already spent a lot of money. I said, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. We'd have to rewrite it. She rewrote it. We rewrote it together. I helped her rewrite it. And shortly thereafter, she had a $10,000 weekend because the way the book was written before did not represent her expert celebrity. And then, um, and then from there, if you if you have a hybrid publisher or a uh, if you self publish and you sell X amount within the first year, you have a very good chance if you want to have a traditional publisher to pick it up. And there's certain things you need to do. All I'm saying is a traditional publisher picked it up, and she's happy as a lark. She's now you know because a book needs to be doing the heavy lifting for you. This a really wonderful speech needs to be doing the heavy lifting for you. What does that mean? That means that the speech and the book needs to attract your ideal client. That needs to bring in clients. That needs to attract the media. That needs to attract 
uh, podcast hosts who are going to interview you. Have that do the heavy lifting. And it does do the heavy lifting if it if and when it represents who you are, your genius zone, your expert celebrity, and who you are authentically and what you do in the world. Nice. Okay, so I know our peeps are going to want more from you. How do they start their journey with you? Sure. Uh, they can go to my website, ruthkline.com, K-L-E-I-N, and get a free ebook on productivity and time management, which I don't care what field you're in, you, you're you going to want this. Trust me on this. This is going to get the ball go, going at least to start. And also, um, there is a, uh, a link there where you will also, um, if you'd like to get, I'd like to gift you 30 days, Monday through Friday, free pocket coaching. And I talk about just insights that I have, uh, talk about how important the SWAT team is in business and in your home life. I talk about mindset, money, uh, branding, marketing, time management, productivity, all the things I love, all the things that are required to move us forward in a very big way in our businesses. And so I'd love to give that to your um, to your viewers, Michelle, uh, complimentary for 30 days. So I love it. I love gifts. And I love that we're kindred spirits <laughs> on this whole journey. Uh, so you have been absolutely awesome. Any last words for our peeps? You know, I think I think the one last thing that I'd like to share is that um, every truly everyone is doing the best they can at this moment in time, at this moment in time. And, and if things aren't working the way you want them to, that's just, that's just a little bell that goes ding, ding, ding. It's just a little bell that says, okay, why don't you find someone who can help you move forward to make what's not working, working. Why wait? You know, my seventh book is called Generation Why Not? Seven Principles to a More Purposeful Business and Life Driven by Attitude, Not Age. Doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter how much schooling you've had. It doesn't matter because your stories and your experiences are worth millions of dollars to you. And so, what you want to do is be able to share that in a way that's not hard. It's about becoming aware of how you can do things a little differently. That's it. I love it. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I know how valuable it is. Thank you, Michelle. This was fun. You're great. <laughs> You're a great viewer. And you are so patient. I'm going to call you, <laughs> I'm gonna call you Michelle Job. For your patience. <laughs> my, new, my new name's Joe. For those of you who don't know what that means, you can go look it up. <laughs> awesome. Peeps, and thank you for being here with us today. This is Michelle Nedelec saying, go share this with your friends. We love helping entrepreneurs grow. Be sure to subscribe to the show. Are you running a business over seven figures but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap.